Ladies and gentlemen, it's our pleasure to have Victor Hovland in the interview room this morning. Victor, thank you for joining us. This will be your fifth master's appearance, a resume that includes low amateur honors in 2019, as well as a first round co-lead last year. How has your preparation for the master's tournament evolved over the years? Uh, that's a great question. Um, I feel like I've kind of done different things every single year. Um, still don't really know what exactly I need to do. I think it's something that I just kind of do off the cuff. Some, some term or uh, some years I feel like I might have to play the golf course a little bit more. Other years it's more maybe practicing. Um, I spent a lot of time last year practicing all around the greens, whereas this year I think it's maybe playing a little bit more on the golf course, getting ready with a couple of tee shots, just kind of getting dialed in off the tee and into the greens. With that, we'll open it up to some other questions, which we'll have in both English and Norwegian. Victor, it looked like you were uh, working with Dana Dahlquist yesterday a little bit, and I just kind of want to go back to the end of last year. You were, you were playing the best golf maybe of your career. It seemed like an interesting time to make a coaching switch. Um, what went through that, and, and kind of where are you right now with coaches? Um, yeah, I'm still kind of looking for some opinions out there, but I feel like uh, I'm on a good track right now, and we'll see where that takes us. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's one of those things like I was playing great golf last year, but it's not like I'm trying to change my golf swing. It's just sometimes the game of golf, you try to do the same every day, but then, um, you know, um, things aren't the same every day when you go to the golf course. And I took a huge break. Uh, after last year and when I came back things were a little bit different and I had to kind of find my way back to um, where I think I'm going to play my best golf and even at the end of the last year I still felt like yeah I was playing great but I got a lot out of my game and it didn't necessarily feel sustainable but it's not like I consciously went in and said hey we're going to change everything up. So was it just a, a function of kind of needing a different voice? Uh, yeah, I just, you know, always trying to learn. Um, but at the same time, I, I just felt like I got to basically the pinnacle of what my golf swing was, was able to do last year. Um, and just when I keep looking back at um, my swings from 2020, 2021, I just really had more control of the golf ball, in my opinion. And, um, you know, because – during the Scottish Open and the British Open last year, I was on the range for probably seven, eight hours uh, after every single round, just trying to kind of figure it out a little bit. So it was honestly like I knew I was playing good golf, but um, came a little bit of a surprise that I was able to win the FedEx Cup right after that. But I still felt like that issue kind of had to be um, uh discussed and, and kind of figured out, and that's kind of what I'm doing now. Luke. Hey, Victor. Um, I'm curious, when you're working through a few tweaks in your technique, be it body tilt or grip or whatever it is, how long does it take you for those changes to kind of bed in and really start feeling comfortable and to the point where you don't have to think about them anymore? Usually not that long. Um, it kind of depends. You know, mo most of the time in my career, if I've had – um, an issue and I need to work on something I'll, and I did this even in college I would just get right by behind a mirror or something and I'll hit balls do a lot of slow motion swings and just really feel the changes and, and, and groove uh, the movement and if I can do it at a slower pace then I'll just keep ramping it up until it feels more comfortable and after a certain amount of shots it just feels comfortable I go out to the course and I get that um, uh, confirmation that it, it works out there as well. And I see the shot that I'm trying to hit and then it just clicks. Then it's all building confidence from there. The problem has been when, um, and I kind of have been dealing with this recently, it's like you're trying to work on something, but it doesn't necessarily feel exactly right. And then that's when you kind of have to go back to the drawing board to keep figuring out until um, things start to click, and um, I feel like I'm in that situation now. Now I just have to keep practicing and, and um, uh, get the reps in, and um, that's, we'll see how long that takes. Mary-Kate. Hi, Victor. Um, when you arrive on property this week and you see the green jackets, 
Do you have a sense of wondering what it would be like to have one and envision the day that you would? Uh, yeah, I don't really let my mind go that far, but it is pretty cool. It is a pretty special um, jacket and just to be affiliated with this place and in any way, that's pretty cool. Um, you know, just, just being here is pretty special. So I'm trying to enjoy that and uh, certainly have to take, a, take care of a lot of stuff um, until we get there, hopefully on, on Sunday. But uh, yeah, I'm just enjoying every minute. Adrian. When you are grinding, like you said, for six, seven hours on the range, what is it like at the end of that? Do you feel satisfied? Do you feel, you know, just any closer to the answers? Uh, it depends. Some sometimes not. Uh, sometimes you feel like you are making progress. I would say a little bit recently it hasn't been that satisfactory. Um, but at the same time, it's like either if you don't see the results, you can always learn something. So if you didn't get better, okay, well, what did I try to do today? And then you know, okay, well, that doesn't work. Then we need to try something else. So you can always learn something, and it's all a process. You know, it goes up and down in the game of golf. But if, you, um, you know, if you're always trying to see results at the end of the day, every single day, you, know, you, can, you can get pretty disappointed uh, a lot. So I'm always learning, but, um, yeah, uh, hopefully more satisfactory rain sessions than, than not for sure. One follow -up. How do you know when you're done for the day? Uh, when your body's too fatigued or, um, you know, hopefully you, you'd like to end the rain session with kind of some, some answers and you know, okay, well, this, this was an improvement today. And then hopefully you come back the next day and build upon that same thought and, and just kind of see where that takes you. That's the, I'd say that's the goal. Gabrielle. Victor, when you are tinkering with your swing like you are right now, does it change your goals or expectations for the week, like coming into the Masters? How does it change your expectations or goals? Uh, yeah, I mean, your confidence level are going to be a little bit different than when you don't have any conscious thoughts. Uh, that's obviously the end goal when you play this game is that you show up and you go through your routine and there's almost like a black up. You just, you just react to what you're doing and you see the shots and, and the ball flight uh, translates into what you're seeing. That's, that's the goal. And when you're not doing that, you have to obviously work to get there. Now I've still played some really, really good golf, uh, having to think about some stuff. So it's not like I'm ruling myself out of the tournament. I just, I'm just aware that, Hey, we're, we have some additional challenges than that I haven't, had in a while, um, but that's that's how it goes. Sean. Talked about each year, your prep here being maybe a little bit different and playing more in these days leading up to the tournament. How do you kind of ascertain what you need to do on the practice round days and, and what are you trying to see out on the golf course? Yeah, I mean, well, I've been on the range so much, so I haven't played too much on the golf course, so. Um, I figured it's a good idea to, to play the golf course uh, a few more times than I normally would have. Um, but at the end of the day, it's, yeah, they've made a few changes out here on the golf course, and it's nice to just get out there and um, clear them um, or remember some of the places where to hit it and where not to hit it. But at the end of the day, if you just hit the right shots, if your technique is good and your course management is good, uh, you're probably going to play a while. So that is... That is the number one thing. Gary. Victor, last year when you shot 65 on Thursday, you were five for five scrambling, including the up and down on 18. Um, those shots, you even said to yourself, look, you need a short game around here. I hit some bad shots today. Can you replicate shots like you took on on 18 right now? Yeah, I'd say so. Uh, I think the technique is actually fine. Uh, I just have not spent any time on the short game at all. Um, kind of the last last few months because I've been prioritizing the long game stuff. And, um, you know, when you're not hitting your best, you're putting more pressure on the short game out there in the tournaments. And I've definitely short sided myself quite a bit recently. Uh, so I'm sure the stats look a little bit worse than than they feel like they should be, but um, I still, when I get up there, I still feel like I, I know what I'm supposed to do, and I'm still hitting some really nice shots around the greens. It's just 
short side of myself definitely pads the short game stats a little bit better and um yeah um just trust the technique and that that it'll work kyle yeah victor uh i know it's a i know it's a stressful week just major championship week but what about being here about the club or the course or anything about this place brings you delight or brings you joy yeah it's just like um, and I think I've said this before about a couple of places, like you just feel the atmosphere or the history in, in the walls. It's like as soon as you enter the property, um, it's uh, like a spiritual experience, uh, if anything, like you just feel the emotions and you feel like you're on um, very just a, at a different place. And you remember all the other master um, championships that are that have been played here before you remember the highlights and um yeah it's just cool to be a part of that so it's just a lot of gra gratitude and and uh just excitement to get the tournament going and and hopefully put your name in that list as well so uh just super excited to be here and hi victor what has it been like for you to see some of the players that you perhaps haven't seen in a while phil and brooks and john rom what's has there been a lot of camaraderie out there? Uh, yeah, a little bit. I didn't get to see a whole lot of guys yesterday. I saw a couple, and it was nice to uh, chat a little bit. But obviously, I'm busy doing my preparations, and, and they're busy busy doing their preparations. But there are certainly a couple of the guys out there that I that I miss, and I think it's good that we get to meet and, and uh, get to play uh, against, the, against each other again. Um, and uh, hopefully everyone at home will enjoy seeing everyone kind of play against each other. Abraham. Victor, what's your best memory about 2019 and what advice can you tell to all the amateurs on, on the field? Yeah, it's hard to pick just, uh, just one or two, but um, having Coach Bratton on the bag was really special. Uh, staying in Butler's cabin uh, one night was pretty cool. Um, obviously becoming low amateur and sitting there with Tiger Woods, uh, C1 uh, in 2019 and uh, hit a couple of really, really nice shots on 15 that I'll always remember, just hooking a six iron around there, hitting the green two, two out of two times. So that was, I was pretty happy with that. Um, other than that, I mean, it's, it's um, as advice for amateurs, it's, um, you know, it's, it's a really special week and just, just enjoy it. And I think, obviously, you want to do well and, and show everyone what you can do. Because if you're an amateur player in here, yeah, you're an amateur. No one really expects you to play that great. But I know that if you get in here, you, you are capable of playing some great golf. But I think the more you put pressure on yourself, I think it goes against you. Just just kind of show up and and enjoy the week and, and try to be as as calm and just enjoy yourself as much as possible. And I think it'll be easier to um, play your best. Um, and obviously, I think, it's, I think it's very smart to get together with a couple of uh, veterans that have played out here a lot of times and get some practice rounds in with them. I remember I played with uh, Bernard Longer, my first, um, you know, one of my first few practice rounds uh, in 2019. And it was just really cool watching him go about his business and watching him play um, and certainly learned a lot. And it's just you can you can really pick some of those guys' brains and, and um, it will really help your game. DJ. Victor, can you uh, take into uh, – back in the back, can you uh, kind of talk about the mindset of a common fan or a common golfer that walks up on their first tee on Thursday to take a tee shot? A lot of guys think about – how tough it is, but what's your emotion behind or is there an anxiety or feeling you have when you step on that first tee on Thursday to take that first tee shot? Yeah, I'd say it just kind of depends how good your game is feeling. It definitely helps. Um, that tee shot has never been like that um, nerve wracking for me. When, I, when I'm swinging it well and I can hit that little cut uh, with the driver, I almost just aim down the left side and I can hit a little bunk cut off the um, off the left side and cut it in the fairway and more often than not I've been successful there so I I'm pretty calm when I'm getting up to that tee shot um, obviously bearing in mind that it's the first tee shot of, of the Masters and everyone's watching I definitely was a little bit more nervous playing with Tiger last year um, but
but um, if, if the more comfortable you feel over the ball, the easier it gets. Uh, I think it goes from being more nerve-wracking to more exciting, um, and uh, that's kind of the, like, if I can relate it to the Ryder Cup last year, um, I wasn't as much nervous as I was at Whistling Straits my first year. Uh, it was more just turning the nerves into more excitement, and I was certainly just more excited last year when I played here. So, um, I mean, we'll see how it goes this year. But, um, um, yeah, just try to turn it into just something that's exciting, and, and hopefully uh, you get off to a good start. Dan? So when you're going through this process and working things out, working out the kinks, um, is it tough to find the fun, the love, the passion, or is it just grind mode? Or can you kind of come back to where it all came from during these times? Yeah, sometimes. It's like um, I, I would say, I, I don't know if that's normal, but I feel like that's how I'm wired a little bit. If I play bad, that almost motivates me more than when I'm playing good. Because when you're playing good, it's like, okay, I know what I'm doing. I can kind of take tomorrow off or – I know that I'm playing good, so I'll just chill for a little bit or uh, whatever. You become you become more complacent, um, but I would say as soon as I play bad or I make a couple of mistakes, that almost motivates me more to come back and, and get better. And I'd say that's definitely how I've felt the last couple of months. The only um, – the, the, the kind of frustrating part is when – you're trying to figure things out and you don't necessarily see the, the progress or you don't know exactly if this is like the right road ahead. And that's when uh, you have to think more about the process instead of just kind of, you know, shutting that off and just committing to it. But it, it's just been hard because like in my career, I've always been okay if this is what I need to work on, if I do it in slow motion, I need to see good results right away. Because if I don't see the good results right away, then I'm just not gonna commit to it. So it's been hard to commit to something that I, I believe in. So that's been the frustrating part. But uh, as soon as I see kind of the shots come back and I'm, my game might not be in the greatest place, but if I see that progress, it's like, it's super motivating. Because then the more I just show up to practice, the better it gets. And then the faster I do it, the better it gets. And then I'm closer and closer and closer to where I want to get. So um, I'd say, like, when you have some adversity or you're struggling a little bit, it kind of gives you more purpose in a way to show up and try to figure everything out. So that part has been pretty cool. But uh, I'd like to see some results and start playing good again. Um, but, yeah, I'd say I'm pretty motivated. Kelly? You mentioned having a different approach kind of every year you come here. Why is it hard to replicate that success year to year here, and why has it kind of changed? Yeah, there's just so many factors here. Um, obviously, the wind here swirls. You can hit good shots, but the wind might swirl, or you might read a situation wrong. And the even though there aren't that many, there's not that much water around the greens or off the tees, but there's a lot of really penal shots around the greens. So you can hit a good shot, but if you misjudge something or it goes a little too far and you're missing the wrong spot, that could could easily be two shots different. Um, you know, for example, I just think back to last year. Um, on the last round, I hit a really nice shot into number six, but uh, went too far and it flew over the green and I made double from there. And it was that's a good shot. And if I read the the wind a little bit better or a hit a little bit shorter, I might have a really good look for a birdie and that could change the whole tournament. So it's just little things like that. I mean, we've obviously seen number 12 has been um, dramatic over the years. Uh, so there's definitely some um, some factor of luck in, in there. Um, but uh, I think it's also cool that you see the guys with certain course management styles. They, they usually do pretty well year in, year out. But um, yeah, there's just a lot of drama, and when there's a lot of drama, you just don't know what's going to happen. Kevin? Victor, you're obviously pretty intellectual, thoughtful about the golf swing. I'm curious, do you, like, study it? Do you read about it? Do you watch videos? Is it all feel-based in your own thing? What, how do you kind of go about thinking through it? Um, yeah, I mean, it's been a, an evolution. I just remember growing up and uh, loved the game of golf and just started – 
get on YouTube and, and Googling stuff, and I found a couple of guys that I liked, and then uh, I start to learn what they teach, how they teach, and then that uh, leads me to another guy. I start reading his stuff, see how that contradicts with the other guy, or maybe he has a different take on things. And um, so it was definitely a, a huge uh, process there of just trying to learn as much as possible. Um, I'd say kind of what what um, got me really deep into it was I was reading Kelvin Miyahira's uh, articles online when I was like 15 or 16. And uh, he was kind of the first guy that I had seen that started to talk about kind of biomechanics in, in the golf swing. And uh, before that, it was all just like, oh, swing, swing on the plane or oh, you're in or out or whatever. So I really liked just that level of detail into describing the golf swing, what the actual body parts are, are doing. And uh, that obviously leads you to a different rabbit hole. And then um, now I'd say kind of everything is more biomechanics and and forces and torques and how that uh, affects the, the golf club and, and the golf swing. But um, not like I'm not trying to spend too much time into reading about that. It's more, OK, how can I use that information to to improve my own golf swing? Because that's at the end of the day, I'm I'm a golfer and trying to help myself. I'm not trying to understand everyone else's golf swings. But um, I think it's I think it's neat to to have an understanding about that stuff and and um, yeah, I, 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 the more information you have, I th in my opinion, it can only help you. Howard. Victor, uh, based on where your game is right now, what would you say the toughest shots are specifically at Augusta this week? Toughest shots. Um, I think right now with the greens being a little firm, you, you definitely have to uh, be able to hit like higher iron shots and be able to stop it into greens into small sections. Um, Cause the, the thing is when it's windy out there, you kind of want to hit a little lower shot into some of those greens, but if the greens get firm, they're bouncing too far. So it's kind of having the, the in-between shot where you can still hit a high and spin it and stop it on the green, but they're still flying strong through the wind um, and into some of those, sections i just played nine holes the back nine yesterday and some of the where the pins were at it was hard to get close um so the obviously that starts a different kind of discussion if if it's worth taking on those pins or maybe the course management has to has to change so there's so many just small details and nuances that you have to kind of prepare and get ready for any specific holes that you that you know of that you're preparing for not not really. Um, I mean, it's it's just kind of getting the shots down and 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 getting the belief in in the skill set, and then I think it's just being smart on some of those holes, like twelve, for example. Don't you don't have to go overly crazy on the back right pins. Just hit the middle of the green and make a make a three. Um, you know, fifteen I think is uh, is a is a fun one. Just to, just how the course management kind of changes a little bit on the on the certain pins uh i think i looked at the um the stroke average or the score average on 15 for the front pins on the right how hard or difficult that actually plays and that might make you change your course strategy or course management a little bit you don't have to lay up very close to the water you kind of want to stay back maybe try to spin it but at the same time you want to spin it as much because it can roll back in the water so there's just a lot of nuance to, to some of that stuff Victor, thank you for your time this morning yep. and best of luck this week. Thank you.